Hello, I'm Black Pie and I just wanted to thank all those people who have been writing to me and telling me they're enjoying my videos, um, hailing up those people who I've met recently in certain places I don't want to mention. <laughs> and yeah, I just want to big up all the followers and yeah, stay blessed. Anyway, today's, um, oh yeah, continue to subscribe and, you know, share with your friends and whatever. Anyway, today I was wondering whether or not, you know, like the, the Home Office are saying they've lost the records and they don't know how, they don't know who's here and who's not. And people are going through this arduous process of trying to prove that they're in, that they're legally in the country. Well, um, according to the National Audit Office, which is the office that, you know, goes through with a fine tooth coat, all the government the government agencies to make sure they're doing their job properly. And they were brought in because of the Windrush um, situation. Anyway, I'll just read what they are, what they are and who they are. The National Audit Office, um, they brought our report on the 12th of in December 2018. It's called The Handling of the Windrush Situation. I haven't managed to read it. I'm going to read it and I'm going to share what I think is important, you know, during the week. Well, over the next few weeks, I'm going to highlight what's important for you to know. Um, but the National Audit Office is an independent parliamentary body in the UK responsible for auditing central government systems, government agencies and non-departmental public bodies. And they've given out some key facts. Whoops, dropped something. Um, they've given out some key facts, which makes me wonder whether or not the Home Office really lost the Windrushians' documents. Okay, the first thing is um, they state that 599,078 Commonwealth born people living in the UK. Who arrived before 1971. Now that's based on the 2011 census. So I'm my, my, I'm asking myself if they have. I mean, 599,000. It might not cover all of the Windrushians, but that is quite a large proportion. So the same way they've got these these people's documentation, they should really have the others. And I would like to know what kind of documents they had to prove that they know that these people arrived before 1971. Because I heard that some people can't even get their medical um, documents prior to 1971. So, or 1973 or 74, whatever it is. Um, there were around 171 Commonwealth individuals on whom the Home Office has a record on its immigration data, database and who were born before the 1st of January 1973. Well, if they're born in the UK, I'd expect them to have that. So that, that's nothing new. But it does mean that those people shouldn't have to, those people born in the UK prior to 1973 shouldn't really have to prove that they were born of um, Commonwealth citizens because they've got the records. Um, around 2,000 Caribbean nationals whose case the Home Office is reviewing to assess whether or not they may have been in the UK before 1973 and whether they have been subject to a compliant environment sanction. So these are the people who they're trying to check whether or not um, they should have, they should be in the country, basically. Um, there's 2,658 people granted citizenship or leave to remain through the Home Office's Windrush Task Force. And that's what I um, gave you the details on in an earlier video. That task force that can help you do that process, even if you don't have all the documents said. I don't know what they do, but yeah, they're supposed to be able to help you. Um, there's 164 cases the Home Office identified of individuals in the country before 1973 who were detained or removed since 2002. And then 18 people the Home Office considers most likely to have suffered detriment, such as being detained or removed because their right to be in the UK was not recognised and therefore were it where it is most likely to have acted wrongfully. 14 of these have died. I bet, well, 14 have died. I'm not sure if it's a 14 out of the 18, but I'm sure there's a lot more than this number, but this is only the number that they're owning up to. But I, I know that the 14 died out of the ones that were really suffered serious harm through what this wind rush, through this hostile environment policy. So, um, 
I don't even know how they're going to compensate them. But yeah, I just I just thought I'd share those figures with you because it does mean that there is some data. And I mean, in a in a country like this, that's supposed to be so clued up. Of course, they've got documentation. They just decided to give people a hard time and try to find out more about people. I mean, if you check it. For people to have to go through this process, it's almost like rape. You're having to give everything, you know, without, you know, you don't have no consent, do you? You're having to give everything up about yourself in order to stay in the country. It's just violation. And it's like I read something about the biometric card. You know, in America, it's, it's, it's deemed unconstitutional and illegal because, what did it say? Oh, me and my bloody notes. Um... They call it NIDS in, um, in America. And NIDS stands for the National ID System, which is equivalent to our biometric card. And the Supreme Court ruled on Friday the 12th of April, that's earlier this month, that the NIDS bill is unconstitutional. The entire NIDS statute has been declared null and void and without legal effect and violates the right to privacy, and it is not demonstrably justified. So I'm not quite sure how the biometric um, permit doesn't hasn't got the same result, because it more or less is the same thing. It's violating your privacy. It's got everything on it. So, and the thing is, the biometric card is only for foreign people, so it's just like it's it's one of those racial profiling again. It's just so so wrong. But unless I mean they had somebody to challenge that in America, there's nobody to challenge that here, so they'll probably get away with it until somebody does. But I'm surprised that these lawyers are not challenging something like that. Oh, but it's not lawyers, is it? It have to be human rights. And that's probably another reason why they want us to leave the EU, because once we leave the EU, there are, there's not going to be much human rights for us left. Anyway, that's all for now. Watch out for my um, next video. It's going to be why has bias lasted so long through over the, throughout the years, throughout the generations, really? Because when you think about it, you know, why hasn't things changed over generations and generations and generations? So I'm just going to give my viewpoint on that. You know, it's just my point of view. It's nothing academic. I'm not going back to know. I'm not citing any academias and, you know, books or anything like that. It's just my thought processes on why. So that's going to come up um, very, very soon. And yeah, and that's all. Keep sharing my videos and thank you very much for writing to me, those who do write to me. And yeah, like I always say, if you've got anything you want me to discuss, research, you know I'm happy. Just re email me at blackbrightnews at gmail.com. That's all for now. Bye bye.